Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at the District Charitable Foundation and with us we have the chair of that foundation, Vicki Arndt. Vicki, welcome. Thank you, Wade. It's great to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your background and how you ended up with the foundation. Well, I'm a financial advisor by profession and um, I have been very involved with our own club foundation, past chair of my club foundation. And so the opportunity came to me. Um, I've served on the District Charitable Foundation before as a, um, as a secretary. And so now it, it, the opportunity came for me to be the chair. And I understand foundations. And I, I certainly believe in the cause. And so I was asked by the current governor to step up. And I said, OK, I'll do it. <laughs> Good for you. That's a rotary spirit right there. Yes, right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, personal. Well, I, as I said, I'm a financial advisor. Uh, I've been doing that for, I'm in my 21st year. And um, so I manage money and I do financial planning. But I, I, my passion, one of my great passions is Rotary. I have been a Rotarian since 1999. And I've traveled all over the world on behalf of Rotary. And I have friends all over the world, as you, like you do, <laughs> uh, on, uh, that are Rotarians. And um, my, my passion uh, is for service, and it always has been. I've served in, even in my community in a lot of capacities. But, but Rotary has a very special place in my heart because uh, we, we have the opportunity to match Rotarians all over the world together to make a real big difference in the world. And that is very special. It's very unique, and, and it's very different than a lot of – we're not just a community – uh, you know, club, a community club. We are an international club. Very true. Now, how does this uh, foundation fit within the, that model, uh, the ideals of Rotary? Well, we do a lot of different things, the District Charitable Foundation. We, we do uh, a lot of things to support our clubs. That's our purpose. The mission of our, of our charitable foundation is to provide extra resources to our clubs for the projects and uh, community service that they're wanting to do. So it fits really well uh, because funding is always certainly an issue, especially for those smaller clubs. Smaller clubs have a harder time uh, pulling together uh, their fundraising, and the need is the need is tremendous everywhere. So the money never goes to waste. So tell us a little bit about the uh, the foundation itself, uh, as far as the history of it. Well, the foundation was started actually in 1999, and it was begun as an opportunity, as I said, really to do to augment scholarship giving. Um, most of our clubs do have scholarship programs for high school and or college students. Each club has the latitude to determine how they're going to uh, administer those programs. And, uh, but it was designed to be an augment to that. Uh, the first year they did a concert at the um, Thousand Oaks Civic Arts Plaza and they raised about $50,000. And then after that, a few more concerts and raised some more money. And that's how it began. Um, over time, uh, we have done a lot more than just scholarships. In fact, we, the scholarships have changed in the sense that we are giving not scholarships to uh, students, but we are giving opportunities for uh, increasing our service to our club members, such as district travel grants, such as Rotaract grants. Um, that are an opportunity for those uh, individuals to reach out into the world in a different way. Got it. So what year was it actually started? 1999. Okay, by? It was uh, Doug Wieben uh, was the district governor at the time, and uh, it was actually chartered uh, by in, in 1999 in November. And so it's been going on since then. Now, the specific role at that time was scholarships, but... And you said now it's expanded into also doing travel grants, um, even water project grants, things like that. Um, is there the opportunity for clubs to actually participate also with this? In other words, at one time I understood that this foundation also served the clubs itself in case they needed to have a charitable organization to support Yes, a Set, setting up a 501c3 is not a small task. So right. especially for smaller clubs that are, really don't have the resources uh, to have a separate board uh, of directors, which is required by law, right. along with accounting and so on and so forth. Um, the District Charitable Foundation can serve as a conduit for their fundraising activities, uh, provided they meet certain guidelines. But absolutely, that was one of the intents. Just as um, my club, Thousand Oaks Rotary Club, 
we have a charitable foundation, we do the same thing. We will raise money, then the, uh, the, the individuals or sponsors for our events get a write-off, um, get to claim it on their income tax return as a charitable donation, um, as opposed to giving it to the Rotary Club itself, which is not, doesn't qualify for a charitable right. donation. It's, a, it's not the same. It's not a 501c3. So the district can serve in that purpose and capacity, and actually right now, uh, we've got a couple of clubs that are needing that kind of assistance, and we are offering it. Very good, very good. Now, um, if you look at the structure of it and trying to keep it as, I would say, balanced as possible, tell us the composition of the board, board of directors. Well, the board consists of uh, the current governor and a chair, um, the incoming governor and a, their chair, their chair selection, and the immediate past governor and their uh, their chair. So that's the composition and then we have a, another Rotarian who is our treasurer who happens to be a CPA which is always nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then our um, district, uh, district Rotary um, Foundation committee chair, which actually you are this year, <laughs> um, is, is okay. also a, a, not really a member of the board but they are an ex officio mm -hmm. member because uh, the travel grants uh, we don't administer those travel grants, we only write the checks. The grant committee, um, which is under the DRFCC, uh, is the one, uh, that committee determines which travel grants are, um, are accepted, and then we just fund them. Sounds good. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the success stories that you had with, with uh, some of the projects you funded or the grants. Well, you know, I, I, I'm new in, sen in the sense that I, I, I haven't been involved in the, the actual outcomes all that much. But I can tell you this, that, that last year we did a Rotaract grant, and I'm a big believer in, in getting young people out uh, to see the world and to have the opportunity for international service. I, um, I've taken my own children on trips to India and to Mexico and Nicaragua, and it changes lives. So I know that that is an absolutely vital element. And, and Rotaract, Interact, those kinds of, organ or those kind of uh, clubs for uh, participation, again, it just makes a big difference for those kids. So that's, to me, one of the great success stories. Um, we also, um, if we can provide that opportunity for clubs to utilize the Charitable Foundation as a fundraising arm, then what happens is, Entities such as corporations or individuals who want to, who, who can, well, corporations in particular, who can only give to other 501c3, or will only give to a 501c3, um, that provides them an opportunity to get that, those sponsorship dollars, which go right back in the community. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's a win, 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 everywhere, all the way around. And the foundation I see is not specific to geographical area. In other words, it's not community-based. You could do international. You could do pretty much anything you'd want to do. We haven't done international, but I have a club right now uh, that is interested in and in, in, uh, receiving some funds that will, will go out internationally. And, and it is my hope that we will be able to do that for them because there isn't any reason why we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Rotary International does it. A lot of organizations do it. We just haven't done it. So okay. we're expanding even in that way, which is great. And it's that, exciting. That is great. Um, I wasn't talking as much about the grants themselves oh, okay. as the travel component of that because that's a key part of uh, the grants themselves or the travel grants. Uh, right. Travel grants, most of those would be administered internationally, correct? Um, yes, that's, uh, yes, usually that's, that's correct. Unless maybe I suppose if someone wanted to do a you know, project in Appalachia or somewhere, you know, we, 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 it depends on where a club wants to do a project. But um, again, the grants committee works very hard to determine which grants are, or which, which opportunities are the best. We, we set aside a budget every year uh, from our funding that, that we say this, this amount will go for travel grants, and when that, that, that funding is gone, then it's gone. So last year, we, we didn't have, we only had um, one club that claimed a travel grant, so we have an over it, or we have a, a surplus this year, and we'll add it to next year so there'll even be more money. I think one of the big things that we're not doing and we need to do better is publicity to really get out to True. the clubs and let them know that this is available and my intent is to make sure that happens. Great, great. So on the travel grants themselves, give us some of the, uh, the guidelines and also the way it's funded. In other words, I believe it's a 50-50 match. It is a matching program and the travel grants are designed to either be something that allows you to do research, uh, to create a new partnership or to actually go um, in a, on a project that, that to review and that sort of thing. Now, Rotary International, through their Global Grant Program, also provides 
uh, funding for travel, and, and this program can augment even that. If you get a Rotary International uh, global grant and it includes travel, it, it does not mean you can't also get some extra travel money for, from the district charitable Very foundation. True. Now, most of the uh, Rotary Foundation grants are more specific to the experts and also creating or uh, getting research for the needs assessment component yes, of that. Yes. Whereas yours would be less restrictive, yes. I would guess. Yes, absolutely, yes. Well, that's a good one. Yes, and they, but there's a reporting mechanism. Sure. We can't, the, the clubs have to report back, and it's a reimbursement process. So uh, you do the travel, you give the upfront money, and then you come to us and, and for reimbursement, documentate. We show the documentation, and then we reimburse. And what is the amount of that? The, the maximum is $1,500. Okay. Is that per individual or per club? Per individual. Per individual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if a club was going to have more than one? I, I, you know, actually, I don't really know, to be honest with you. I think that the travel grant, um, there is a limit, yes, to yeah. how many people can go from a single club. And it used to be, I'm not sure that's true any longer, but I, it used to be you couldn't do it every year either. There used to it's be true. an every other year or actually, every three, every three years. year every three scenario. Years. So I'm sure that that's still in place. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, there's a few pictures that I had posted up on one of the grants that we were able to use, actually two of the grants. One of them was a travel grant that we went to Mexico with. Mm -hmm. And with that grant, we actually were able to fund and observe a scholarship grant for a bilingual school that's in nice. Mexico yeah. that actually benefited um, over 200 children in, in the Mexico area and also brought in uh, English-speaking people. Mm -hmm. They were able to mix in, and then they would speak their, their native language as part of the bilingual program. Yes. So that was a great one. And on that program, we actually had a rotor actor, um, David Vo, who, who visited with us and went along with us on that nice. one. So that was, a, that was a nice project. It's very nice when you can get the kids involved, too. It yeah. is. And what we do with that grant was um, we actually shared that with the whole group. In other words, we each put in a little bit. We got the $1,500, but paid the difference up. The club mm -hmm. paid for part of it, and mm -hmm. individually we put some money up. Right. So it covered it quite well. Well, good. I think a lot of clubs, again, I don't think they realize that these opportunities are available. And, and um, I know in my case, I, I've traveled uh, to India three times. Mm -hmm. uh, and my clubs helped a couple of the times. Uh, but I didn't even think, honestly, of applying <laughs> for a, a district grant because I, I just it just didn't come onto my radar. Mm -hmm. And I and I could have certainly. True, unfortunately, uh, those funds there's no fundraisers, so it's kind of a limited uh, amount of money. That each is year. correct, and and that's something that I have concern over. Actually, that I would like to see us have a more systematic, uh, specific fundraising effort. Um, and there are lots of ideas that I have for that. But good, but that good. is that if we want to create a a, a really viable, uh, robust opportunity for clubs then we need to have a, a better way of funding it. True. Uh, and if you look at the funding component, some people, um, the critics would say that you're taking away from the Rotary Foundation for a charitable foundation that's going to just serve the district. How do you see that? Because I see that it's a, it's a different benefit. It works both ways. Well, I can tell you this, that, that I, um, I'm, a, I'm a very um, staunch supporter of the Rotary Foundation, uh, as is my, my club. Uh, I am a huge believer in the Rotary Foundation and the money that comes back through DDF dollars um, from our contributions to the annual programs fund as well as polio. Um, and we have a club foundation and I do both. Um, I don't think it's an e either or, I think it's a both. Um, the district, I think uh, what, what needs to happen there is there has to be the case made as to the why. Yeah. Why? should we be doing this? Um, the, that's the same case that Rotary International has to make with why should we support the annual programs fund sure. or why should we be supporting our local um, club foundation. Um, I think one of the areas where you really could have an impact would be in the, in the area of bequests. Um, when you have, uh, as in my business, a, a, when your expectancy matures, um, then you have an opportunity to raise some funds, and I think that people would be very willing to put a little bit of their estate toward, just as I have toward Rotary International or my club foundation, which are both beneficiaries sure. of my estate, mm -hmm. um, to the District Charitable Foundation as well, but we've made no case for it. True. Um, I've seen some of the successful uh, district foundations around the world. There was one in Michigan, for example, I talked to you about, yes. which has a million dollar endowment um, based on some individual giving that money. And they use that exclusively for uh, scholarship foundations or yeah. grants. And I think that, that that's, that's, a, that's a possibility, but it has to be something that 
there's got to be continuity and sure. and districts have a little bit of trouble with continuity sometimes and so my intent again right now is to make sure that for the next few years we do and that whatever we do begin we begin together and that we continue it for the next few years sounds good and with those grants also um, district charitable grants that is I could see that as a potential leverage for funding for foundation grants through the Rotary Foundation yes, also. Yes, absolutely. And that's leverage that most people don't see. They don't anticipate that. Yes. Knowing that you have to have, still have cash contribution X amount to match Right, that's monies. right. That's right. So again, on the travel side, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be available for, um, for global grants for the, for the project side. But on the travel side, yeah, it, it, it certainly could. Mm -hmm. um, I've got another picture of a, uh, that we took. Uh, this is another travel grant to evaluate and observe some of the water project potentials mm -hmm. in the area of Mexico itself. That one was also funded by a uh, district charitable foundation travel grant. At that time, we were able to fundraise and actually fund six different water uh, systems in, in the Mexico area that have now expanded out to over 200. And again, that was because of a travel grant creating the opportunity to do the research on that. Well, we actually have a sub-account within, uh, with, within our charitable foundation. I use the word sub-account somewhat loosely, but, but mm -hmm. we have a, an allocated amount of money that's available for water projects specifically. Okay. So, and and they are, the hope of our, of our charitable foundation is that we increase that because the need for water internationally is tremendous. As, even in California. I wonder if we could sure. get one for here because <laughs> <laughs> of our right drought. Hey, uh, definitely. <laughs> Just have to figure out how to get it here. That's it. <laughs> That is true. That would be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for the water projects, uh, those projects would be specific to assist clubs uh, in different projects? Yes, yes. Would it be a global grant match? It could be. Yeah. It could be a global but grant it match. But it doesn't have to be. Right. Okay. So I think that that's a, that's a great thing, too. I was just talking to a club this morning, and they were talking about doing, uh, so they had some water project opportunities in, um, in Africa. And, um, and some of those don't go through... Uh, well, some of them are, 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 are global grants, some of them may not be, but the, the uh, intent, again, is to increase the opportunity for clubs to have funding for water grants. Got it. Okay, good. Specifically. Now, have you looked at partnering in with any different uh, non-governmental organizations, other I foundations for I have not. For water I have projects? not. Like the, yes, I have not. Just curious, because uh, one of the programs that we had was um, with World Vision, mm -hmm. and they had done... Grants with Rotary in excess of a million dollars, yes. and yes. seems like a foundation, something like that, would be a great partnership. Something there's that another would... organization that I'm blanking on that that has done a lot of water stuff throughout the world as well, mm -hmm. um, that is affiliated with Rotary. So I think that there there are, and I know Rotary International has a lot of skin in the game related mm -hmm. to water projects. Now, for the District Charitable Foundation, do you have a subcommittee for that to specifically take a look at? We the... do not have a subcommittee. Um, I think that that, again, is a growing place for us. If, in fact, we are able to reach out to clubs and the need becomes greater, I would, I would think exactly we would need a subcommittee. We interface with the Grants Committee because technically we are not, we are not the ones who are determining right. who gets the grant. So right. in my mind, it would be something that might come under the district rather than uh, under the Charitable Foundation. So that would be something that the District uh, Rotary Foundation would take, uh, committee would take a look at. Yes, right? exactly. But that would make a kind of quite a bit of sense. Yes, yes. Uh, we are hoping at one point in time that we could actually create a, a network and it has a need specific to water, water yes, and sanitation. Yes, yes, And have that published so we can then start creating that organization that we don't have right now. You know, one of the things that's so interesting to me, and we don't think about it here in the U.S., but, but uh, st the statistic in India is an example. It's something like, um, I don't know, there's only about 30% of, of, of people, 30% of people have access to a, to a, to a real toilet. Sure. Um, and it's, you know, that's shocking to me that yeah. that would be the case, but it's true all over the world. It is. So the sanitation element, water element, it protects from disease. It does so many different things. It's, it's not just about water. It's about improving people's health and their, their outlook and their sure. lives. Sure. Now, how about the uh, Rotaract part of it? Let's, let's talk a little bit about how we're uh, helping out Rotaract. Well, again, Ro we're, we, re we really want our Rotaractors. We want to support them. I, that's one of the other things I love about Rotary is that we really, we really do love our kids. Um, our interactors and our rotor actors, and, and I call them kids. Rotor actors go up to rotor, young yeah, professionals. <laughs> young professionals, but they're kids to me. And the older I get, the more kid like they become. Okay. But the the um, again the opportunity for them to participate in an international project. I will say, I will say that 
you know, that we always talk about that Rotary moment when you became a Rotarian, right. that you go to Rotary meetings and you sit there and you eat lunch and you listen to the speaker and you're, you know, you come back the next week and that. But then there's a moment in your Rotary life where you really become a Rotarian. I think a lot of that times that happens on, um, with it, with your international projects. Right. I know for me it was when I went on a National Immunization Day, sure. and I know your next guest is going to be talking about that. <laughs> uh, but the National Immunization Day in India changed my life. It changed my life. And I and I think that if, if we can offer those opportunities to the rotor actors to expand their horizons, uh, it's, again, it, there's n it wins everywhere. Right. Right. It wins everywhere. Now tell us about the benefits that you see with the, at the club level of using the district foundation. Well, the district, the, the, the clubs have, um, you know, if they have their own foundation, then probably there's not necessarily a lot of reason to use it. But I, as an example, this club that I've been dealing with um, regarding um, a pro, an international project, they have a club foundation, but their club foundation only funds tangible goods. So in other words, they're going to send a crate of medical supplies somewhere or they're going to, um, I don't know, buy something. But it's, it's actual physical tangible goods so that the limits of their charter as a nonprofit uh, make it unavailable uh, to this club to be able to utilize their own club foundation. So in my mind, again, that opportunity is tremendous uh, and it, 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 it keeps clubs from having the responsibility to again have a separate board and to do all the accounting and to manage if there's a significant amount of money manage the money all of that it requires uh, a lot and smaller clubs don't usually have those resources Very the true. other opportunity they have is that do the donor advised fund through the rotary foundation but the downside to that is um, is that it um, they do charge a fee for it um, and I think some clubs would view that as the possibility they might lose a little bit of, of autonomy. On the other hand, I think it's a fabulous, I think the Donor Advice Fund has so many applications that would be wonderful as well. So really, Rotarians have a lot of opportunities they don't even know they have. <laughs> they do. And you said, uh, well, we are short in trying to get the word out that we actually yes. have this District Charitable Foundation, which we're hoping the show would be some of that awareness yes. too. Yes, yes. How else would you see that working uh, as a plan, trying to get the word out there? Well, you know, I was, I was uh, the chief operating officer for a district governor a few years ago, and my experience was um, that the first email you send, nobody reads, and the second email <laughs> you send, few people might read, and by the third time where you put important, important, you know, you need to read this, people did read it. So I think that you have to tell the story and keep telling it and tell it again. I also think that dispatching, we've got you know, enough people on that district charitable foundation board, we can dispatch them out to the clubs to do a program, uh, to do a 10 minute spot, to do a rotary moment, whatever it might be. But I would think that we've, we've got every area covered. So there isn't any reason why uh, those who are my area local, we couldn't get out to you know, our group, our region and tell the story because it needs to be told. But I think also the website needs right. to be improved. We, we, we have data on there that, that we don't have the current data. Um, and a blast emails out to people, part of the newsletter, the governor's newsletter. I mean, I think there are a lot of ways that we reach out to people, this program. There are a lot of ways that we reach out to people to tell them. But I think the information has to be front, center, story told <laughs> many times because I know my memory um, you know, it takes me a while before I, if someone gets my attention. I've got so much going on. Sure. So, well, tell us about what you have right now as far as the District Charitable Foundation. What's, what's in the works? Um, how many travel grants uh, are you looking at? Where are they going to go to? Rotary well, ones, we have Rotaract it, ones? Tonight is our first meeting for the year, so we have not established our budget. Um, but as I said last year, we, had a seven, we, we set aside $7,000 for mm -hmm. travel grants. And only one was claimed. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, we, again, we have to do a better job. I, I would just yeah. say that that probably was just the, the clubs didn't know about it. Um, but we, we want to, um, we're, we'll determine tonight what our budgets are for Rotaract and Interact. I know we, we also had about a $6,000 budget for uh, Rotaract, not Interact, Rotaract. 
um, and we only used maybe $500 of that last mm -hmm. year. So we still have that money available. Um, we have a little bit of money for water grants. Um, we also, I, there's another avenue that our, our, there's a couple other avenues that this District Charitable Foundation is uh, involved in, and that is disaster relief. Mm -hmm. In the event that the district would like to um, have a disaster relief fund for a particular something, we did that, I think, with the tsunami. Um, and, and I remember in, um, in Sri Lanka, and we did it, I think there was another one that we did. But in any event, um, so we, are, we can be the funding mechanism for that again. And then, then another, another thing um, that's available is, the, is a fundraising um, event. So, so let's say the district is interested in doing some sort of fundraising event for a particular purpose. And we, we uh, did that through something called the Epic Challenge mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and we're doing it again this year. Okay. But the Epic Challenge was uh, a bike ride uh, to um, support polio. And all the money then went to the Rotary Foundation. Great, great. We, we, uh, you just mentioned that one of, one of those components that you, you're taking a look at, what is being offered, and that was the Disaster, a disaster mm -hmm. relief fund. Mm -hmm. Right now, currently, our district has nothing set up, correct? Oftentimes it goes to either Red Cross or some other group like that. We have the that capacity sounds, to do that. that we have the capacity to That's do it. Now, idea. I know the Erskine Fire, which is out in uh, Lake Isabella area, Kern County, uh, they have, they're sending it to a nonprofit there. But it, we do have the opportunity to do that if we wanted to be. That, that would be a huge benefit yeah. to the district because yep. uh, there's so many people wanting to go ahead and contribute. Yes. There's n nothing yep. out there for we it. We have that opportunity. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, do you have somebody in, that would be in charge of that specific? No. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> and that would be you. <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> Probably. No. Yeah, no, that, I, is, that is true. And it seems no. like every year, well, unfortunately, every year there's at least one or two that come up that we want to fund. Or I think that would with. be at the direction of the governor and the direction of, of the board. If the board wished to and the governor wished to try to support a, uh, a, a disaster, then, then we would set up the committee to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is good. Future, um, have you had any plans made for what you want this uh, to go to as far as funding wise, dollars and cents wise? I'd looking? like to see, I'd actually personally, this is just Vicky's, Vicky's um, uh, <laughs> assessment, not, not, I, nobody knows this, so now I get to share it. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I would like to see us do some, again, strategic fundraising, and I would like to see us be an entity that could be held in perpetuity to benefit whatever, uh, whether it's scholarships or it's Rotaract or it's Interact or it's all the things that we do now. I just think that, that there is no downside to that. There, there is no downside. There definitely is not. Well, with that, thank you very much You're for sure joining welcome. us. Uh, Looks like we have a lot of work with that <laughs> foundation to make that successful. Yes. But all great ideas, and I'm glad you're at the head of that. Well, so thank, thank you very much, thank Vicky. You, Wade. Thank I you for all it. the work you do. Thank you. We definitely appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Okay. With that, everybody, thank you very much. Take a look at the uh, charitable foundations in your club, in the district, and internationally. You'll find that there's a lot of work that could be done through these, and the leveraging of those funds is one thing that makes a big benefit for Rotary itself. With that, thank you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>